Adam and I had no desire to write damsels in distress. We wanted to bring the iconic figures into the present. These are women who stand in front of their men. They don't need saving, they can save themselves. are incredibly dated. The gender dynamic has definitely shifted and women are no longer reliant upon men for rights and property and protection and um, survival in general. <laughs> Not the jewelry type. Indeed, I noticed. In some of the old fairy tales, they were a lot younger. They were more innocent, more delicate, timid, fearful. Once is not that. I, I mean, we have our moments when we're afraid, but we really confront all these things. For Jennifer Goodwin, who we wrote the part for, uh, you know, what we loved is she had that Snow White spirit. But when the queen came in and she grabs that sword, you believe she's going to wield it. You believe she's going to stab it. She's not a queen anymore. We just knew that our Snow White had to be a woman who wouldn't stand behind her friend. Step away from my husband. A lot of, I think, her strength comes from the love she has for her family, for Charming, for Emma, for Henry. That's what gives her the thing she needs to be strong, is having something to fight for. If you ever try to hurt anyone in my kingdom again, I will kill One of my favorite, you know, hero moments in kind of the very classic sense is Snow White in the in the flashback story of Bandit Snow White. My favorite scene generally involves Snow White kicking ass. I took archery as a child at summer camp and I loved it, but it's extremely difficult. Bow and arrow is a fantastic weapon of choice for a female hero who doesn't have magical strength. Mary Margaret's going to need to be able to strike at a distance so she's not physically overpowered. Bow and arrow is perfect for that. And there's just there's something about that. That's just that's a hero's win. When was the last time you shot an arrow? Twenty years ago. That's just like riding a bike. We love the idea of flipping the roles um, this season and. I mean, Charming going to the sleeping curse and having Snow have to come wake him up with a kiss. But the way we wanted to do it was not to make either of them weak. It's a brave and selfless decision Charming makes to believe that, that Snow will come and save him. You did it. Did you ever doubt I will? No. He definitely wants a strong woman, a woman that has her own mind, a woman that uh, makes decisions and stands up for herself and who can lead. He wants someone that can be at his side as an equal. If you think this is the right thing to do, then it's what we show you. I think what's called a time is unique in that it has a fair balance of masculine and feminine energy in all of the characters. The men are not afraid to be sensitive, the women are not afraid to be strong. Thanks. The women on this show are, are definitely badasses, uh, Emma Swan being one. <laughs> She has a, a physical strength that the other women don't have on the show. <laughs> I was just thinking today, I haven't kicked down the door in a while. <laughs> it's kind of funny because Emma, of course, it, she is the daughter of a princess and a prince, but she's not a princess at all. I would too. She's more of a tough, strong woman. Emma doesn't know she's rough. She's never been treated delicately. She's never had anything handed to her without her working really hard for it or doing something to survive for it. You're not going to guide us anywhere until you tell us who you really are. She's got an extra level of awareness that maybe everybody else in the show doesn't have. You can trust me. You know, they kind of joke that it's her superpower that she knows that people are lying, but it's, in my mind, it's just having an instinct about a circumstance, knowing when something's off. I'm sorry, you. Oh. 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 Oh.
interesting between uh, Emma and uh, Tamara. It's great for us to get into a place here where we have these two women fighting, and it's it's an all-out brawl. Watching her tango with Tamara like she's in a UFC cage is pretty impressive. I get to sort of handle physicality in a totally just sort of raw way, and not in a completely refined way. So it leaves some room for being creative physically. This very grounded real world strength. Regina has this great magical uh, vengeance power of like, I am justified in what I'm doing. She doesn't ever say she's heroic, but she says she's justified. I think what makes a hero is kind of the same thing that makes a villain. Um, she's resourceful. <laughs> Nobody has more flaws than Regina. Thank you, magic. She seems to have an addiction to magic. It's a weakness that gives her strength. She's not so physically strong. I don't think she ever really had to use her hands to fight. Uh, well, apart from fireballs. And I think it's because she was a princess before she became a queen. And a lot of her strength comes with magic. You're lucky to have changed. The hardest thing for Regina is to have patience. And every time she runs out of patience, she does the wrong thing, and it always, always comes back to haunt her. Kill me. What? Henry would never forgive me. Regina is pretty much honest with herself about what her strengths and weaknesses are. And one of her biggest weaknesses is that she kind of um, relaxes, I could say, often. <laughs> But you know what my problem is? I never learn from my mistakes. We have said love is a weakness, love is a strength. On our show, uh, at different times for different people, I think magic is exactly the same way. It can be your weakness if you're addicted to it, if it's a crutch you lean on, or it can be the thing that, that allows you to do a heroic action. It's all in how you use it. I've really been trying. It's okay. At least you're using it to help people now. Strength can come in many different forms. For some people, it's physical, and for other people, it's it's intellectual, it's mental. Belle is another character who, like Regina, doesn't immediately grab for the sword. I, I do love books. <laughs> We got to see Belle move beyond being just this girl who's who's a dreamer and is always thinking about adventure and heroics, and actually get to see her step into the shoes of the adventurer. Now go be a hero. <laughs> With Belle, she really got to be pretty badass and kill a wait, can I say it? I can't think of the word. Yara. Yawaguai. That took a while. But yeah, that was a fun episode, showing a different side to her. I love the idea of putting her in a situation where ultimately her intellect wins out and proves stronger than any sword. It's really fun playing a princess that uh, defies the princess stereotype. She has that element of being really brainy and maybe figuring things out in a different way. No one understood what I really was, except you. Well, you're not the first beast I faced. There's a lot of strong, strong chicks in this show. Belle, you certainly the counterpoint to gold, there's no doubt about that. You don't need power, Rumpel. You need courage to let me in. If there's any, any, any possibility at all of, of, of Rumpel stroke gold changing, it'll come through this character. She brings out the better side of him, and uh, she's the only one that can do that. She is his strength, in fact. I'm coming back, Rumpel. Seeing Mulan's story as uh, a woman who could, you know, buck the traditional roles, Belle was able to get a lot of strength to do the same thing. You're a fool! Yeah, I know. I have a privilege.
privilege to play a lot of strong women, but you know, no one as iconic as Mulan. We fought many battles together. You know, when you try to break the mold, uh, you have to be a lot tougher. <laughs> and that's what I think you see with Mulan. There's an honesty to her, and there's an, a code of honor to her. And as she said, only fight something you truly believe in. All right, lock it up. Ready? And action. Working with Jamie Chung as uh, Milan is uh, a pleasure. She has good body awareness. So we've done a few fights. Jamie is very eager to get in there and gung-ho and play. It's been really fun. You know, who else gets to dress up like this and it's not Halloween? It's just so many layers to this costume and it's pretty heavy. If it's not a satchel, it's a bow and arrow. If it's not two swords, it's something else. Thank you. You saved my life. Pairing Milan and Belle was a really... It, it's not the first thing you think of. And the two of them end up sharing each other's skills and learning from each other. There was once a time when people didn't think that I had what it took either, but I proved them wrong. Just what's more fun than mashing up these, these great classic characters. And this sort of tribe of women, there's definitely a sense of female power joined together. We'll help you. We'll find a way, won't we? Defeats Snow and Emma. What an interesting thing to be the same age, basically, as your adult child, and to be able to team up like that. They'll be a force to be reckoned with. Emma, run! <laughs> There's an interesting balance where you get to see these partnerships where they really are equally yoked, where they're going to challenge each other, and they're going to inspire each other, and they're going to lift each other up when they're down. They're right here. Some of the most satisfying episodes are the episodes where and then Regina, sort of making strange bedfellows, have to team up to try to stop something. And it's only by, you know, working with your enemy or finding common ground with someone that you're able to kind of do something more than what you would have been able to do yourself. You have more power as a collective than you do as an individual, especially if you're working together for a common good. All our women are strong in different ways, but yeah, they all fit together. So that they aren't all just duplicating, like, oh, strong women, strong women. We are all strong in different ways. <laughs>